welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, Roy Lupton is out of hospital and the first thing he wants to do is go shooting. We have a dazzling array of guns for you at the Oxford Gun Company. First, badgers. Let's put control back in the hands of the countryside. We have been sent a disc and a statement. It was postmarked Essex, well outside the Carl area. It doesn't mention cattle, it doesn't mention bovine TB. It talks instead about the damage that badgers do to wildlife on the ground, from hedgehogs to harvest mice and ground nesting birds from oyster catchers to English partridge. It also suggests they're shooting badgers. Badger shooting is still illegal, except under licence or if you're destroying a sick or injured animal. However, this film shows the strength of feeling in the countryside about badgers which, protected by law, are wiping our countryside clean at night. The overpopulation means the animals are turning up in surprising places. This is a badger set near my home in the southwest of England. It's on a road. It's lucky this government calls it a badger problem. Some governments would call this a housing problem. Whatever you think of people shooting badgers willy-nilly, the debate is currently bogged down between farmers and badger huggers. The farmers have a lot more to lose. Stars such as Brian May might say he deplores it, but some of his animal rights activist gang have threatened to burn down barns and superglue supermarket cash point machines in protest against the cull. They have already spray painted an office of the National Farmers Union's insurance arm, NFU Mutual, in Gloucestershire. They have threatened farmers and their families in the cull areas and say they will wait out at night on roads and around sets armed with walkie talkies in order to sabotage the cull. Filmmaker Chris Chapman, who has spent years recording the effect on farmers of government mishandling of first BSC, then foot and mouth, and now bovine TB, has strong views about where responsibility for looking after badgers should lie. I mean, Brian May, I've written to Brian, I've written to him in the past. Uh, he's a very intelligent man, but he's missing the point. He's missing the point. He's, it, 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 it's, it's become too emotive. And, and, it's, and, and, and because, you know, emotion tends to override common sense. Common sense tells us there is a big problem in the countryside. It isn't like foot and mouth because the public can't see it. You know, this is a, this is a hidden disease. They understood foot and mouth of 2001 because when they sat down at night and watched the television, they could see all these cattle on burning pyres. So, so that, was, that was brought into their living room night after night after night. This is a hidden disease. How do you show the public this disease? Very, very difficult, but it's there. You can't deny it is there. For more about Chris's work, go to bovinetb.info. Scroll right down to the bottom and click on a link called Bovine TB Away Ford. If you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link to Chris's latest film. Chris lives on Dartmoor in Devon. Despite Field Sports Channel's good links with the farming community across the southwest, we could not find a single farmer in the Cull area in Somerset prepared to go on camera. All of them tell me they do not want to become a target. Despite what Mr May would like you to believe, our furry friends do not die in their beds surrounded by their grandchildren. Here is badger specialist Richard Gard speaking to Chris Chapman in one of his films about bovine TB. You can see the extended claws. This animal has had a very difficult end to its life. It's been unable to dig properly to forage for its food. This is fairly typical of the situation that we see. The set had been impregnated by rats, they'd been feeding on the carcass. The other side of this carcass is quite badly eaten and it's possible that this one was dragged out by a fox. It's been nibbled all over the place. This situation with the unhealthy badgers is really important to be aware of. They don't have a simple existence from life right through to death. Farmers, shooters, country people, we're all after a healthy population of badgers. But you don't get that without management. Celebrity chef Clarissa Dixon-Wright wants healthy badgers because she likes eating them. 
When I was young, Badger was still very much eaten in country districts, quite legally. Uh, it solved the Badger crisis, wouldn't it? Um, because pubs in the West Country used to have a Badger ham on the bar. Um, what's 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 like, a, a, like a ham on Iberica. Like, like Serrano ham? That's yeah, that's absolutely, made with Badger. It's very good it was too. Was it fatty in the same way? Did it have that rich... It did have that rich depth of flavour about it. You do think, you know, Badger, what it eats, I and mean, it's very much on a par with a pig. So, what number of badgers to have? As shooters know, wildlife management is not an exact science. In the field sports community, we know there are a lot of foxes, but we can't say how many. We know there are not enough hedgehogs, and we are sure there are too many badgers. Scientists discovered the link between badgers and bovine TB in the 1970s. The explosion in the badger population since then has meant an explosion in bovine TB. These maps show how fast it has spread. The disc we were sent. Clarissa on cooking and the destruction of the British cattle herd. It's all about the same thing. It's about putting wildlife management back into the hands of country people and taking it away from the urban whingers who don't understand it. Now from a hot news topic to David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. British shooters face a double whammy from antis over lead shot. The Wildfowl and Wetlands Trust says that 10% of birds die from eating lead shot, which is now banned for wildfowling in England and Wales, and banned over wetlands in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Meanwhile, the Food Standards Agency has advised pregnant women and children to cut down on game meat because of the risk of eating lead shot. The European Food Safety Authority says the greatest source of lead in food is from cereals and potatoes. And Basque points out that pound for pound, there is more lead in chocolate than game. American states are gearing up for the pheasant shooting season. And it's all paid for by the government. In one state alone, the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Division of Wildlife has released 15,000 pheasants at 28 public hunting areas. It's youth-only shoots for the last two weekends of October, with the stateside season starting in November. The RSPB has awarded its top prize for farming to an owner of a well-known shoot. The 2012 RSPB Nature of Farming Award goes to Henry Edmonds from the Calderton Estate in Wiltshire, a well-known partridge shoot with three other shoots making the final selection. The number of wild salmon caught and then released in Scotland last year is the sixth highest on record, according to the Scottish Government. Recorded since 1952, the figures show 87,915 salmon were caught by rod in 2011. Sea trout catches have declined since the 1950s, but the Government says the 23,324 caught last year is 4% higher than the previous five-year average. Numbers of salmon and trout caught in net fisheries continue to fall. Mark Gilchrist is an happy man. Our report on his new hunting app, which records where you shoot your rabbit, fox or deer, has led to hundreds of you paying $2.99 and downloading it to your phones, for which he says thank you very much. There's even talk of organisations here and as far away as Australia using an adapted version of the app. If you want to find out more, click here to watch the film. Mark is asking people with iPhones to be patient. That version should be available very soon. And finally, a man got the wrong side of a rutting stag in a park in London. Luckily, he was on the right side of the tree. After several minutes of Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush, the film posted on YouTube shows our hapless townie escaping upwards. You are now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, with the map that matters, it's calendar. Welcome to Calendar for those important dates for the diary and those seasonal reminders. Moon is waning crescent with nights getting darker and heading for a new moon on Monday the 15th of October. So a bit of wild weather over the weekend could make for exciting wildfowling. The best of wildfowling and goose shooting is still in the northeast of England and along the east coast of Scotland as birds start coming in from their summering grounds in what is already becoming the frozen north. 
Game shooting is underway all over the UK, with released birds reportedly on average smaller than usual because of the rain earlier in the year. The lack of moon should be good news for fox shooters. On the deer stalking front, we're between the best of the fallow rut and the best of the red rut, though lots of wildlife activity has been later than usual this year all over the UK. There are still plenty of country events to enjoy, including the Tackle and Gun trade show this weekend at Stoneley Park, Warwickshire. And are you going to be in the Essex area on the 25th of October? That's next Thursday week. Independent Shooting Supplies in Mount Nessing is holding an open evening starting at 5pm. The first 10 people through the door get 20% off clothing, footwear and accessories. The next 10 people get 10% off and there's a charity raffle, all proceeds going to Essex Air Ambulance, where the star prize is a day's pigeon shooting with our own legendary Andy Crow. Other prizes include cartridges and a shooting lesson with former England team member Tracy Riddington. The evening goes on until 9pm and includes wine and cheese, so don't forget Independent Shooting Supplies, Mount Nessing, Essex, 25th of October. For more information call Andrew Stevens on 01277 356 181 or email admin at independent-tool.co.uk. Also, if you're in or near Wiltshire on Friday the 12th of October, there's a charity clay pigeon shoot at Winkworth Farm Lee near Malmesbury with six stands of team flushes. And on Saturday the 13th of October, the Schools Challenge Winter Series is offering 50 sporting of the Oxford Gun Company. You'll see more from the Oxford Gun Company later in the programme. That was this week's calendar, and if you have an event that needs a plug on next week's programme, talk to James. James at fieldsportschannel.tv Thank you, David. Like Fiona Bruce, but no, come to think of it, not really. Now, Roy Lupton has recently come round from an operation, and he wants to go shooting. The road to recovery can be a long, boring trip, so just a week after hip replacement surgery, Roy has plans to get out and about as quickly as possible, especially as it's one of his favourite times of year, the fallow rut. But first, he needs to learn how to walk before he can run. Probably not the best turn of phrase. We start with pimping his ride and testing his shooting position. As long as my surgeon, my physiotherapist and all the nurses on the ward don't find out, we should be fine. Okay, so, I mean, it obviously looks a little bit ludicrous what we've done here and, uh, and just set up, but it has got a serious side, I can promise you that. What I wanted to do um, was just practice shooting from the wheelchair and uh, so we've made a bit of a Heath Robinson attempt to make a bit of a rest and uh, so we've cable tied a few sturdy sticks and used my uh, rest that normally goes on the side of the truck. So we're going to uh, have a bit of a play, see if I can shoot straight with it. Um, hopefully uh, the morphine hasn't taken too much of a toll on my shooting skills and uh, we'll see how we do. So his accuracy is OK, but he's got to move up to a 2-4-3, plus get close enough while rumbling through a wood in a wheelchair to get a chance of a clear shot. Roy's also got to find someone who is willing to take him stalking. His consultant has told him no bumping around, of any kind, for six weeks. So we'll just have to let him stew until he gets the all clear. Two weeks have passed and Roy has been given permission to drive. He can get to his shooting ground, but he can't load bear. This means crutches to get through the really rough stuff and a wheelchair in the wood. I've uh, finally managed to um, get out and um, we've got a cure for the cabin fever, so I'm heading out um, just to one of my little spots that there's normally a bit of deer activity on. Unfortunately with this one it's uh, all the apples in one basket because we're, we're just going to go to one stand and sit there and wait and hope. So uh, there's definitely no chance of stalking through the woods or anything tonight, but it's a damn sight better than sitting and watching the television and going stir crazy at home. Roy's chair does make a bit of a rumble in the jungle, but he gets himself into a position where a group of does are a hundred or so yards up ahead through the wood. He is not using the sticks gaffer taped to the chair and instead chooses to use his faithful shooting sticks, which drop to a comfortable level. With them firmly planted, he doesn't think he'll be blown backwards off his chair. Where we are? We're going to be running out. 
what we hope will walk by is a pricket. However, we get something or someone else instead. A dog walker passes between us and the group of deer. Roy is really disappointed and frustrated that people don't stick to the footpaths. Again, there is no footpath here at all. And yet again, we've got another dog who's now walking down towards us. Roy doesn't shout out as there is a slim chance there's a buck to the left of us. Roy perches on the crutches to do some calling. It's last chance saloon. We're on a part of the estate where there shouldn't be anybody at all. There are no footpaths, no public access whatsoever on one of the main running stands in the far part of the estate. And all of a sudden you get a guy walking past with his bright blue support, bright blue top on and his dog. And um, with this fading light, you really, really do have to be careful. So again, you know, you've got to rely on your optics and it's, it's in this half an hour of last light that they really do pay to have good, uh, good optics and see what's going on. Roy hasn't made all this effort not to give it his best shot and he heads over to the other side of this patch of ground to see if we can catch up with a fox we filmed a few weeks ago. This time Roy sets himself up on the bonnet. The calling works a treat. The tack light torch picks up some eyes but he runs but stops. For a second glance Roy takes his chance. Oh. That was so nice. I mean, we had a, a very quick response from that fox coming in there. That was absolutely superb. But it's just uh, oh, definitely a cure for cabin fever. I've had two weeks or two and a half weeks locked indoors um, and uh, a lot of bed rest and a lot of sitting there. And uh, I mean, yeah, it's got its bonuses. A lot of people have been around and been uh, bringing me around grapes and uh, making me cups of teas and whatever else. Um, Dom, you've been noted in your absence. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it is absolutely superb to come out and above all else really yeah it's uh, it's nice to know that everybody out there uh, you know cares and uh, wants you to get back to it so right should we go and pick that fox up although we can't be a hundred percent certain there's a really good chance this is the one that got away now i think this is actually the fox that we had come up to us on camera um, when david and i had a bit of a breakdown in communication and what i wanted to do was see if we could catch up with him because I knew, I knew pretty much where he would be um, and the field that we're in now is, is just overlooking the wood where we called him in before. So what I wanted to do this time was start off with a different call because obviously he already knew that the, the call that I was using previously. So uh, just kicked off with a, another call, um, slightly lighter call so it's not quite as harsh uh, and all of a sudden it just came bolting out from the brambles. Yeah, it looks like it could be, I mean it's, it's very very difficult to say obviously but uh, it's definitely the same territory and uh, it could be the lad that got away. The healing process can be a long and difficult one and the medical world often finds that animal contact can speed things along. This fox ain't no dolphin but it's certainly got Roy's mojo firing on all cylinders once again. From rifles to shotguns and we're at the Oxford Gun Company where we have a large collection for you to admire. It's all happening here at the Oxford Gun Company today. They're having an open day to start the game season. Representatives from AYA, Rizzini, Browning, Beretta and Maruku are showing off their products. And that's not all. There are the Winter Schools Challenge and the Game Compact Sporting Competitions too. The Oxford Gun Company is at the forefront of promoting shooting to all, so what a good place for companies such as Browning and AYA to come and show off the cream of their merchandise. They are hoping it's going to be bang bang ka -ching. The family firm has set up a day that allows customers to try the guns before they buy, plus they'll get a little free tuition when they try them. Vaughan and son Charlie are trying out the Beretta A400. They are torn between Browning and Beretta. After much deliberation and negotiation, the Beretta is the one they go for. Yeah, we just bought a, a Beretta A400 semi-automatic. Um, my son Charlie's 13. He's been shooting with a 12 bore over and under for the last six months. Um, after about 50, 60 shots, it starts to make his uh, shoulder quite sore. But with a gas-operated semi-automatic, uh, there's no recoil very much. It's a bit more lenient on the shoulder, so we've come along and had a look at a couple of guns and chosen the Beretta A400. Edward King is here today representing ASI, which is the company that brings the AYA mark from Spain to an adoring public in the UK. The main strength of both Rizzini and AYA is that they're able to attend to small details 
which make a gun specific and tailored to the individual's requirements. So unlike mass-produced off-the-shelf guns, these can really be guns that suit you down to a T. Ask anyone, most people own either a Beretta or a Browning. Vaughan and Charlie might like their new Beretta, but most people who walk out of the Oxford Gun Company with a shiny new gun walk out with a Browning. We've had a mixed bag of people today, predominantly game shooters, uh, so we've been showing them a range of uh, game guns. Um, the, the, the most interest I think today has been with our Heritage gun, which is our top of the range production gun. Uh, in 12 gauge and 20 gauge and that's had a lot of attention. While the gun reps are sweetening the customers back at the shop, out in the field we have two competitions underway. The Winter Schools Challenge run by David Florent plus the new Game Compact Sporting. Got a new thing, uh, one of our instructors Robert, he actually came up with the idea of doing, as it's the game season, doing a Game Compact um, sort of little competition type thing which is all gamey type targets for game shooters to come out and practice um, because game shooters put the gun at the, uh, away at the end of the season they don't touch it for a year so they need to go out get some shells down the gun get shooting so when you're out on the, on the field um, you've actually got a little bit more experience of how to hit a pheasant or a partridge. Will Ford, James Lewis and Sam Clark, keen shooting enthusiasts, are taking part in the school's challenge, while James and Will hope to have some luck in the game compact sporting as well. David has been trying to promote shooting to the younger generation. The Oxford Gun Company still introduces shooting to all ages. I had a friend who's a, a member here at the club who brought me down for having a go, and then I got introduced to the instructors and they uh, took me on another day's course and well, I've been loving it. It's been another day out for Home Counties shooters keen to have sparkly new guns for this game season. Now from Oxfordshire to the rest of the world, it's Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting, shooting and fishing videos that YouTube has to offer. An old favourite for starters, Hunter's Vermin has produced Air Rifle Hunting Rabbit Hunt 33, where he is out again, this time with his new Napier game bag. He's good with kit, is Hunter's Vermin, and with a quarter of a million views a month, I hope the gun trade is helping him out. Staying in the UK Vermin Department, Kernow Vermin Control has put up Tailless Squirrel. As he says, I did feel a bit sorry for it, but at the end of the day, it is is a squirrel. It does the same damage as any other squirrel that has a tail would do, so he gets the same treatment. Wise words. Let's go to the USA for 2012 Longbow Hunt Deer Kill Hash 2 by Leatherwood Outdoors. Brits don't know much about bow hunting as we're not allowed to do it, but this film gives an insight. Now the nations get muddled. Online Fishing TV is a UK angling channel, but its latest film is New Zealand style rig, which is an unusual way of tying on a dropper fly and has the serious fly fisher saying, well, that will never work. More on fish and how to fillet a mackerel and cook it in real time by the Scott Ray project shows how to go from whole fresh fish to plate in just six minutes all while you listen to that lovely Stranglers track Waltz in Black. Ah brings back memories. Now let's hop over the English Channel to France where videos Chasse Peche is after a wild boar in Chasse Songlier Cam Sports Coach as well as the hunting he is trying to flog some Lunettes Camera HD which I could have translated for you if I hadn't been sitting in French thinking about the Stranglers. Now Creatures Corner. It was while researching badgers this week that I came across Badger Bin Fight by Slug Vod, who seems to be planning a regular series called Whitey's Wonderful World of Wildlife, but used up all his luck in just one film. Meanwhile, viral animal vid of the week goes to the lucky tourist who filmed Leopard Kill, which combines big cat gymnastics with a healthy love of impala steak. It is being watched at a rate of about a million views a day. You can click on any of these films to watch them. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, if you like shooting, you'll love The Shooting Show. Sporting Rifle Magazine's Mark Nicholson is out with Lamp and Rifle after Foxes. The Shooting Show also catches up with Richard Cook, acting chair of the Lowland Deer Network Scotland, and news this week covers anti-scaremongering on lead, the latest Basque trophy heads and shooting on nature reserves. Well, this has been Field Sports Britain, and if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button, which is somewhere on the bar above me. Or go to our shows page, www.youtube.com slash show slash Should be coming up just there. Or go to our website, 
fieldsportschannel.tv, click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or scroll down somewhere on the bottom right is our constant contact form. Pop your email address in there and we'll constantly contact you. This has been Field Sports Britain.